favorite network of mine that I really have a lot of respect for. <laughs> that, you know, that doesn't always treat me so great, by the way. They could do better. <laughs> but at least they're fair. And I was watching and I heard the story of an incredible, unbelievable young woman who was battling rare bone cancer. They made a mistake. A doctor or hospital made a mistake. She called it a, it was a medical error. Her name is Natalie Harp, and she lit up the television screen like very few people I've ever seen do it. And she talked about how they were preparing her for death. And because of Right to Try, she's now living and I think doing phenomenally well. And somebody said she's here. Are you here, Natalie? Is it? Where's Natalie? Will you come up here, please? Come up, Natalie. Mr. President, you know, we all know the story about the Good Samaritan, but what you don't know is I was that forgotten person on the side of the road, the victim of medical error, the number three cause of death under the previous administration, and left to die of cancer. First, the medical establishment, they came by and they saw me there, so they wrote prescriptions for opioids and they walked on. Next, the political establishment, they saw me there. And they stopped just long enough to come over and tell me how to die, how to speed up my death so I could somehow die with dignity. But then an outsider, my good Samaritan, President Donald J. Trump, he saw me there and he didn't walk by. He stopped. And for every single one of us, he gave up his own quality of life so we could live and work and fight with dignity because he believes in survival of the fighters, not the fittest. And so, Mr. President, I have to say you have made a lot of promises to us and you have kept every one of them. So now we're going to make you this promise. Just as you fought for us, forgotten America will never forget how you saw us on the side of the road and you walked over and you picked us up and you made us great again. And now we're gonna fight for you, Mr. President. God bless you. Thank you, Natalie. It's just, it was an incredible thing. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny. What do you think about 2024? Who do you want to be president? There's a lot of people who want Trump. A lot of people who might want someone else. You know, we can show you poll after poll after poll. It's early. Trump is do be very dominant in the polls. Uh, but let me talk to you about something that isn't really data based, that isn't really based on numbers, that isn't based on something that is totally theoretical right now, because polls are pretty useless, actually, at this point. You need debates, you need people to start running, you need like a bunch of stuff to come together. And you, you really what matters ultimately is the way that people feel about a candidate. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because what you saw in that clip and what you see with regularity with Donald Trump is actually his greatest weapon, his greatest superpower, I call it, which is Donald Trump's ability to connect with human beings, his ability to listen to human beings, his ability to make people feel heard. Now, I know that's sort of like a leftist trope. I want to feel heard. But man, it is a human value. And why does Donald Trump have it? It is a human need. And why does Donald Trump have it? Well, because Donald Trump has been a celebrity for 50 odd years. And so Donald Trump understands celebrity. He understands power. He understands the ability to take a room and have it like eat out of the palm of your hand. But more importantly, to connect with an individual. I'm somebody who's spent time with Donald Trump. 
I, I don't consider him my best friend. I don't, I can't text him. But like, I, I have spent time one on one with Donald Trump. Man, the dude locks in with you. He locks in with you. And then he asks you questions. He connects with you on a personal level. It is magic. It's magic what he does. I've seen him do it in big rooms and small, and I've seen him do it individually. He asks you questions about your life. He gets down the rabbit hole, you know, with interesting conversations, sports or entertainment or music. And he just behaves like a real person. And because of his power and because of his celebrity and because of his energy, it like draws the entire room in with him. And it makes you feel seen. It makes you feel special. And you then get to see moments like that one as, when it, as it pertains to like somebody's health and their well-being. And you get to see moments like this one, which is like the exact same mirror image of Donald Trump taking somebody's personal uh, achievements and overcoming of a, a cancer uh, or a disease uh, and giving that person a platform and the humanity that they deserve. It's something that is deeply lacking, of course, in our political class and the cravenness and the calculating and the coldness of many people in politics and the insanity of people like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. I mean, it's like uh, these people, they're like mannequins, like, you know, just absolute empty vessels. Donald Trump is many things and he's not that. He's not an empty vessel. And you can see it in clips like this. Hi, Mr. Trump. Um I was Miss Wisconsin USA in 2005. Okay. And, um... I can see why. No, thank you. Um, you have been... I just want to say thank you. You saved me in so many ways. And in recent years, um, I've been struggling um, with an incurable illness, and I'm on home care now. It was caused by a doctor's medical negligence, and... In those dark days, fighting, um, right now all the tubes have been removed and I have a do not resuscitate order and I have a seven-year-old son. And in those days, in the hospital, I received from you a handwritten letter that said to the bravest woman I know. And... I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And you, um... Such a wonderful, beautiful woman. I mean, just an amazing woman. And are you, are you doing, are you coming along okay? Um, um, no, sir, but um, that's okay, because I'm here right now to thank you in person, and that was my biggest dream. And I wanted to thank you, because through you and your organizations, my son, who is Mexican-American, seven years old, through your organizations, and just being able to stand on that stage with you back in 2005, the outpouring of love that came from that, um, ultimately provided my son, when he graduates high school, with a, um, a full ride to college. And that That's was great. And, and you know what we'll do? We're going to watch him. You're going to watch him, Tana. Tana, watch him. And, We're going to be watching your boy, okay? But you're going to hopefully you. be around. You're not going to have to have anybody Thank watching. You. You're going to hopefully be around. Those doctors are going to be so wrong. And my but son. we'll be helping you. So we thank you. God bless you. And just, you know, he's a Mexican-American. And you, because of your efforts, have sent him to college. And I have been writing letters to him for when I'm in heaven to tell him that what you've done for him, now he has a great responsibility to pay it forward just as you have done for us. And I can't thank uh, that's you. That's so nice. Thank you, honey. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have to go down and say hello. Is that okay? Thank you. Oh, 